And welcome to this week's Who Would Win. This week's Who Would Win come to us, I believe it was a Britton Thompson. I might have gotten that name wrong. Uh, I, I have the information sheet for the characters. I just don't have the, the uh, name in front of me. I think it was Britton or Brighton. I know. I think I know the first name. It was Brighton, I believe. Uh, but anyway, they suggested uh, Celine versus Wesker as a fight. And I'm thinking about this. Like, those guys seem pretty, characters seem pretty similar. And when doing the research, I quickly found out that, yeah, they are really similar to the point where we'll get to that in a second. But Wesker, Wesker stands at six foot three. After a while, he was shorter than he got taller. Uh, One hundred ninety-eight pounds. Now he's got a very, he's very cold, very calculating, very cunning, very deceptive, very intelligent. Uh, he is a master marksman, capable of shooting a crane, um, uh, the Strassman crane, from a great distance with nothing but his handgun. This is all enhanced with the virus, not the T virus, uh, or. But I can't remember. I can't remember exactly what the virus in Resident Evil is called. He has a version of that. He's a rare blood type, which is why he survived it, and he gave him abilities. He is skilled in a multitude of martial arts, which he even invented a unique martial art to coincide with his ability to uh, move at those hyper speeds. He's he basically has no fear as he is extreme. He's a trained soldier, combatant, things along those lines. Uh, able to, even before he was infected with the virus that gave him super abilities, he was capable of, you know, taking, like, mutations and things along those lines on. Uh, that being said, he is superhuman with superhuman uh, physical abilities, senses. Uh, he can see in, see, bit, he can perceive objects slower than how they're moving, so he's able to react easier. He has hyperspeed, which he can literally move uh, to the point where, one, he can go, like I say, a mile, uh, like a mile to that, uh, if he's here and there's a mountaintop there, he can go at the speed of something of a vehicle moving extremely fast and be there in that amount of time. But in close combat, it can seem like he's teleporting. He, uh, he can seem like he's just there, there, there in a heartbeat. Uh, he's also capable of do pretty much dodging point-blank gunfire, rocket fire, any, any sort of like firearm, as long as he's paying attention. So his speed is god, a uh, god, uh, uh, highly amazing. Strong, he's strong enough to lift a uh, missile, punch through sheet metal missile uh, of a missile, um, you know, toss grown men with his bare hand, dent a, a plane with a single punch, punch through the plane. Uh, so he's had monthly strength. But honestly, apart from his speed, his other defining trait is that he is like nigh invulnerable. Uh, as I was reading this, he, uh, the virus apparently he took apparently strengthened. Not just his skin or muscle. No, it strengthens his skin, muscles, bones, organs. He is insanely durable. Plus, he has a healing factor. Not a supremely high healing factor, but a strong enough healing factor where if he, he got burned on his face one time, it healed relatively quickly. Um, compiled with his durability, he was able to withstand giant steel beams falling off from, from stories high and just be dazed from it. Um, he's durable. He was durable enough to survive the epicenter, meaning the very middle and point blank, you know, the ex the start ignition point of an explosion, and had no effects whatsoever. Maybe even his clothes were fine. So, the man's durable. He can withstand gunshots to the head without flinching. Be stabbed through the arm without flinching, and then heal from that. The man's durability is off the flipping charts. <laughs> Uh, I mean, great, he can't withstand something like a nuclear explosion. He can obviously take blades. Or That's the thing about durability is that as long as the blade is made of an extremely durable substance, sharp objects are usually the key to getting around durability in that sense. But that being said, if an opponent's not strong enough to actually you know, physically match him, they could break their hand or arm or limb on him. So it's like, well, they'll just punch. <laughs> ah! and say, hmm, how about that? And <laughs> just, you know, he'd smack him into the wall. Uh, so, yes, he's by far, his, his most defining trace is his speed, durability, and healing. Yeah, he's physically strong, too, but that's that's not really where his true, true strengths lie. Um, now, he, he, after uh, getting upgraded further with it, he kind of did stop caring about using a weapon, but he still has a handgun that he carries and occasionally uses. Um... His only real weakness is the fact that 
Uh, the virus, he developed the serum basically to counteract any ill effects he could have, and his serum's his biggest weakness. But also, for the sake of this fight, just to make it evened out, we're not going to really go that route. This is going to be him at his full capabilities, more or less, without, you know, the weakness of the serum. Because that's a very specific scenario, a very specific weakness. It's kind of like Kryptonite. It's like, hey, I'm going to have these guys fight. I was like, yeah, and there's going to be Kryptonite involved. Let's see if it gets involved. It is, no, that, that's just silly. So, Selene is... Now, there's a name for it, and I didn't bother writing it down. She's a hybrid. At the she originally wasn't, but she is a hybrid. She's the daughter of an elder vampire and a hybrid as of the second movie. Uh, she's immune to sunlight after becoming a hybrid, so she's got that. She is uh, very innovative. She knows how to... Uh, um, she knows how to improvise in, uh, pretty quickly. She's a weapons master. Uh, her preferred weapons are her Walter uh, PB, uh, P99A, the PB9As, uh, twin Berettas as well, modified H and K USP nine millimeter. Uh, she also uh, Kate will have blades on her. She likes throwing stars. She has those on her usually. Uh, silver uh, silver hunting knives, mil medieval swords. She's very capable, pretty much in most forms of combat in terms of weapons. So that's not the, for the sake of this fight. She'll have her Berettas, her Walters, uh, and her throwing stars on her on call. Um, she's also skilled in quite a in, in quite a few um, forms of combat, hand to hand combat. She's uh, in her as someone I believe put it. She's uh, she's second to none in terms of combat, but that's theoretically relative to the individuals in her universe. Uh, for instance, in the Underworld movies, while she's fought individuals who are probably far more um, physically stronger than her, she, we've never seen, especially as of Blood Wars, which I did not see, but I know she gained, like, super fucking speed in that one, which we'll get to. Uh, she hasn't fought anyone, as far as we know, that's that fast in compared to her. So, yeah, uh, strong, she's strong enough to flip a moving van, which, what the, um, information say, I actually, uh, looked up, actually had the calculations that which would have a momentum of 180 tons so she's strong enough to do flip that uh by but she has to she had to ram into it to do it so she had to build up speed and then you know boom it um she now she's durable enough to withstand uh point blank gunshots like shotgun shots to her, her chest abdomen she can um, withstand, she can withstand definitely uh, a lot of beatings. She's taken a lot of beatings, only come out with like minor scraps or scrapes or bruises. Uh, withstand the ocean pressure without a wetsuit or uh, a uh, breathing apparatus. She is capable of. She has a healing factor, which definitely aids. She can heal from uh, pretty severe ender injuries, but she's not invulnerable to that either. Drinking blood can help quicken up the process almost instantly. She took a uh, gunshot blast to the head and kind of just shrugged it off as she was healing. Uh, her split, her speed is. She's got wall calling ability, as does Wesker. Actually, forgot to add that in. But her speed is to the point where she moves basically like a blur. You can still kind of make her out, but she's moving at speeds that they, in the, in other immortals, other vampires can't really comprehend. One second, I'm just gonna angle this a little better. There we go. Really can't comprehend. So it's when looking at these individuals. The, in terms of, I mean, they, they've got, well, I'm actually going to do that because the lighting was weird. Um, they're kind of the same, very much. They're like assassins. They're, they're, they do the dirty work for their respective individuals. They fight wars or whatever. But they're speed blitzers a lot of the time. They're pretty durable. She is, they're, they're enhanced. They're marksmen. So the question becomes, who do you favor more? Do you favor the... Uh, highly agile and not uh, immortal vampire, or do you favor the highly agile, highly durable uh, assassin uh, in Wesker? Which I'm guessing he's an assassin. Because I never played the games. I only saw one of the movies in theaters. So, how does this fight break down? Well, it's pretty. Let's say Wesker is uh, Wesker and the Umbrella Corporation have, vampire, have gathered vampire genomes or something like that, and they're not going to invest this into the virus and things along those lines they make great well Celine says no nope, I'm going to and excuse me I got like I got something in my note no it's not a booger I got like a I got like a hair that's not that's like he's bothering me in my nose today um so Celine comes in and she's like she's about to take it kind of kind of Alice style like, 
welcome, Alice. And then she realizes, oh, you're not Alice. You are. And then he just looks at her for a second. Celine. And then she's a little shy. like, how do you know who I am? Like, We're the Umbrella Corporation, my dear. We know everything. So I, because that's something I can see that happening. He's like, you know, like you're meddling with powers you don't know or something like that. I was like, I'm taking back what you stole. It's like, you can try. And it's like, oh, really? <laughs> she's just going to be so nonchalant about it. It's just, she's going to just fire gunshots and he's going to be like, it's like, he's just going to move fast enough to just kind of sidestep it and make it look like she missed. Like, and she's going to be like, what? Okay, screw this. Just going to blitz him. And he's going to catch the punch. And she's not going to see that coming. She's not going to think, hey, this guy's fast enough to catch my punch. Uh, Because she hasn't dealt with anyone who's that fast yet, at least not in the Underworld series to date. So he's going to, and then throws her to the wall. She, she, but I mean, and she goes, boom, immediately corrects herself, immediately gets back. And she's like, what, what the hell? He's, says, you're not the only one. It's actually to quote um, uh, Donald Pierce from Logan. You're not the only one who's been enhanced, my dear. <laughs> and then she goes in for blitz, and he goes in for blitz, and now they're blitz fighting. Now, in terms of hand-to-hand combat, Selene does have... Do we know how old Selene actually is in the Underworld movies? I'm guessing she's at least over 100 years old. Easy. Uh, maybe she's older, maybe she's not. I'm go- Let's go with 150 just to safe, sake of sake, safety, uh, for guessing. So, at 150 years old, she's got decades worth of experience over Wesker. The question is, who's the faster of the two? Is it Celine or is it Wesker? Well, the problem with factoring that in is that you have to understand who they're going up against relative to their speed. Normally speaking, Wesker's going up against normal people. So we're seeing how the, he's being perceived by them. Celine is fast by uh, is fast or er, is like super speed by vampire standards who are already faster than your average person and to who and to these who and to vampires and lichens is at best they might be able to see a blur going on so i would actually say that was weird uh that celine is probably actually faster than wesker despite how the description of their feats that he looks like he's teleporting to his uh, opponents as opposed to Selene who's like a blur. But you got to compare to who, what their opponent, who their opponents actually are. So I believe the Selene's the faster of the two when she's actually going all out. And Wesker's quickly realizing this, but taking advantage of maybe like her psychology, maybe because again, probably have studied up on her, probably know a lot about her, probably can like target her about her daughter or her lover or things along those lines. So no, he's going back and forth. I think though that Wesker has just studied more martial arts over his over his time and therefore is probably the slightly more skilled hand to hand combatant and probably the dirtier fighter too when you really think about it. But Selene is the more improviser, so you gotta think dirty tactics, better skill versus faster. Still got a lot of skill and experience and um, imp- he's able to improvise better on the spot. So, you know, she's gonna maybe. Um, quickly get, hit him in the gut and then Paul Brez just do, 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 do. and now he 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 gets kicked in the gut and then just something gets do, 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 do. however did, at, he's durable enough to tank an explosion point blank durable enough to tank steel girders falling on him and not really feel much be a little days bullets aren't gonna do jack shit to him so he's just may, maybe they're kind of and they go and he just ding 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 it's like uh, it's like my turn Jim Boom, boom, do, do. She's dodging. She maybe gets a neck. She's healing. He's healing. So she's gonna quickly realize, okay, I'm not these. My guns aren't gonna do anything. So maybe she's gonna have a silver, silver nitro grenades and everything. So she throws a grenade at his face. He immediately catches it, throws it back. So it's gonna be a speed game of uh, hot potato, basically, of when the grenade goes off. Do, 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 do. She tries to kick him, and he'd probably see that coming and, and grab him. And then hold on to her leg is like she's like what is it or she can't, he can't she can't get out of that he just holds her in it's like no, let's it's like let's see who's more durable shall we and then just let the, the grenade explode now I think she's durable enough to tank an explosion I do think she's durable enough to tank a point not tank but withstand a point blank grenade explosion because she doesn't have the same weaknesses as normal vampires anymore she in fact she pretty much ever since she drank the immortal's blood uh, one of the immortal brothers. She, um, she, she's lost a lot of her weaknesses. Like, she's immune to sunlight now. I don't think, uh, garlic or silver affects her anymore. Um, but the difference is between these two is that Wesker can take that and not have any ill effects. 
I she will have a little effect. She'll be stunned. She'll have probably have burns on her. She'll probably have some ooh, face. Sorry. She'll probably have burns on her. She'll probably have shrapnel. She may be missing us some chunks of uh, of uh, flesh on her, but she'll still be healed. Healing from that whisker, but will capitalize on her stunned uh, reaction and start beating the living crap out of her. Now, in terms of physical strength, I think she is the physical stronger of the two. But the problem is, is that you got to try to figure out if her strength is able to bypass his durability. And if I were to be, if I were to be a betting man, I'd say no. The, the dude is just sort of compa- You have to look at the feats they've survived. Now, she's taken a lot. She's taken like. Uh, lichen, she's taking attacks from lichens, gunshot blasts, things along those lines. But again, steel girders falling on him, explosions, stra- point blank, the epicenter of an explosion. I mean, the dude has survived far greater things as far as I can tell than Selene. She's survived being like impaled and things along those lines. That's not, that's not up for contention. But when you really compare that type of a damage to an explosion or something of much greater like blunt force like crushing force or you know just something that could tear someone apart from the sheer power of it being impaled really is nothing at that point so wesker i think just has the better durability and i think he'd grab her one point and start shooting into her which would hurt but it wouldn't kill her it's going to be a very drawn out fight the question becomes who's going to outlast who in this fight um and really without without any sort of real um you know blood to drink i mean she could try to drink her own blood but it re- i don't think it would really do much for her um i think wesker's gonna outlast her because she doesn't bring anything to the table unfortunately unless she unless she's in a, a, a environment where she can improvise enough to let kill wesker to actually just let him die to, to use something in her environment to kill him like sl- like uh, slam a door or something on his head and ch- take his head off Unless that happens, which is possible, she's very resourceful in that regard. Well, I'd, I'd give it maybe a 10% chance that happens. I think Wesker's just going to outlast her. Wesker is just going to beat her down and just uh, eventually, not, maybe not kill her. Because I think, because I know he would, or I think he would know to keep her alive for research purposes. No, nah, I don't mean that in a perfect way. I just feel like I was going to your like, research. No, research purposes. Like, yeah, we're going to, you know, use your blood. We're going to use every bit of you to develop a new strain of the virus. It'll be better, stronger. It'll even prove me beyond my capabilities now. Anyway, yes, we're going to put you in any drugger and whatnot, and then the experimentations begin. So, yeah, I, I got to give it to Wesker. While Selene brings a lot more weapons and a lot more experience to the table she's definitely i think the more agile even stronger and faster of the two i don't think first off she's faster by that much like if like if she's a, if like like if wesker's a okay if she's a 10 on the speed scale wesker i think probably ranks in at like an eight um so in comparing the two so she's not a great deal faster i do think she's faster she is stronger though because despite the fact from what we've seen I don't. I don't think uh, Wesker is the stronger too. I think just she is naturally stronger than he is. But his durability compiled with his speed and just overall experience in fighting. I think he has better hand-to-hand tactics. I think those compiled together just make him too t- physically tough an opponent for Celine to take down. So long. Uh, long story short, I go 90% Wesker on this, but about 10% Celine. I think there's a scenario where Celine can win if she's if she brings like an actual blade on her and maybe is able to take off his head, which would probably be the only way you could really effectively kill him. Um, then yeah, I'd say she, uh, she wins. But overall, I do have to probably go with Wesker on this. I just think it's the more likely of scenarios. But let me know what you think. If you think differently, that's cool. Let me know down below. Uh, also, like, comment, share, subscribe. If you enjoyed what you see here, you want to see more, uh, click down there to see more. And um, if you have an idea for who wins Star Wars, Superhero Magic, What If, Sup- uh, Dragon Ball, any videos I do on the channel, excuse me, put that in the comments below as well. Let me know. I'll get to it at some point. What If will be up tomorrow. Um, like I said, Magic's not going to be up for it until later in the weekend because I'm getting a fat pack. Uh, Bower Devastation, and my magic video will be an opening of a fat pack. Or a bundle, but fat pack. Well, I'm always calling them fat packs. Let's not kid ourselves. Uh, and I've watched, uh, is it Totalitarian College uh, that does those videos? And I like Totalitarian. Yeah. Uh, Totalitarian. Uh, I believe it's Totalitarian community. Uh, and I like their videos a lot. 
I do, uh, but I do disagree a little bit. Like, is it, I mean, financially speaking, maybe not worth it to get a fat pack or a bundle, but I, I don't know. It's, it makes more sense to me than getting a box straight out. Uh, because first off, it's less cost effective. I don't have to spend anywhere near as much for a box. I can guarantee that while I might be getting some mythics in the, um, in the box, I can't guarantee what I'm going to get. I'm going to get a lot of repeats of the same stuff, particularly in a small set. Ugh. Um, but with a fat pack, it's all randomized, and therefore it's possibly more likely to get not only rare, not only more um, uh, more mythics or more rares, but more mythics or rares that I might actually want. Because it's a smaller set, there's not as many cards, so it's more condensed in some ways. Well, we'll see what happens when I get the box. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you next time.